You know okay, shot, shot. I've got a little bit of practice building these aqua boxes, but now we're gonna have a race. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put a nice solid foundation. Put the time in, make the measurements, measure four times, cuts three. Actually, they're rectangular. <laughs> 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 So we got all the aquascape materials inside. We went and grabbed some wood from one of the locals around here who's also a contractor, which is great because now we have everything we need to get going. So Ed's gonna start measuring everything up and then start shouting measurements back at us and we're gonna start cutting this lumber and start getting our wall up. It's all about the framework. You gotta put a nice solid foundation. Put the time in, make the measurements, measure four times, cuts three or five, and then you screw it in and glue it. <laughs> <laughs> You know okay, feeling good. I've got a little bit of practice building these aqua boxes, but now we're gonna have a race because everything's always better as a competition. We've got bears, we've got lions, we've got elk. How fast do you think you can build one of these? I don't know, I'm not gonna let my experience go to waste. Well, I am definitely the newbie. So if somebody wants to give us a countdown from three to one, and then we'll start. Let's put that, put the hammers down, everything down. Three, two, one, go! What I like to do is get it situated, and then I do just a couple of firm hits, Miyagi style it. Oh no, oh no, this is the, this is the moment that I didn't want to happen. Well, I didn't win that challenge, but we now have a total of eight small aqua blocks built. I think it's time to move on to the next challenge. So, as you can see, we've got this engineered wall here just using two by four lumber. We're gonna end up sheeting it, plywood, three eighths plywood on the inside and the outside. The reason we're doing that is because we're building everything up. And you've seen us do that in home shows, at our office when we built the fish retail system. It's just an easy way for us to kind of create this enclosure. So we've got three walls. We have another one that's gonna come at a 45 off this way, and then another shorter wall that will come perpendicular to this wall right here and join everything together. So we're just building a frame for it. We're gonna use the stuff walls with the drywall is our backdrop. We're gonna go ahead and start lagging them into the subfloor, get them nice and sturdy, start supporting them, and then we'll sheet them, give them that extra rigidity, and then it's fabric liner, and then we'll start getting our aqua blocks installed and figuring out the shape of our pot. So we're rolling. looking pretty impressive. That is really <laughs> fast how this came together. So this is the outside structural wall, is that what you Correct. Call it? Yeah, this is gonna be the outside structure and then we have all those aqua blocks that you just built. Yeah. It's gonna go inside and that's gonna basically take the place of brown okay. soil. And then we'll top it off with topsoil or something like that on top of it so they can put the plants in yep. there. Well, let me know when you guys are ready for the blocks. I think I have a Absolutely. large portion of them <laughs> built and I'll help place. It'll be a Tetris masterpiece. I don't think you have a special connection with them. You know, <laughs> my new thing for the day. I'm speedy <laughs> at it now. I didn't win the block building race, but I'm really good at Tetris. So when it comes to placing these things in the right spot, I think I've got us covered. <laughs> So what we 
we've got going on right now is just trying to figure out how we are going to fill the void space in between all the aqua blocks. Also, how we are going to frame everything out to prevent that liner from bulging out. We're gonna have an enormous amount of weight because of the water inside the liner. So the challenge right now is just figuring out how we have to kind of lock everything together. So it's much more difficult than the average outdoor pond build where we can just dig a hole through the liner in and then get those rock and gravel in there. Now we actually have to figure out how we're gonna brace that liner and keep it up high and prevent it from shifting out and prevent our components from moving. So the aqua blocks are filling up some of that void space underneath the liner, just to kind of build everything up to create our different elevations in our shelves. Ed and Brian are taking into consideration the depth of the water in the pond so you can kind of see the outline of the aqua blocks. So everything where you see bare floor, that liner will sit on the floor and that water will go all the way down to that. So you can see I've got some two by four bracing in here. This is simply just to kind of hold this skimmer in place, preventing it from being pushed back. We have all this void space back in here because we are kind of in a shortage of materials here. We're trying to do the best we can with what we have. Normally we would occupy this space with sand, soil, mulch we've done in the past. We just don't have that luxury today. So we're gonna brace this all with two by fours to lock this thing in place, keep it from shifting and moving around. And we'll just uh, go from there. So the wall is built and it is solid. We've got it all braced up. It's anchored into the existing walls. It's anchored to the floor. There's no way this thing is going anywhere. But now we're starting to kind of lay out our pond and aesthetically figure out where we want water to come up. Right in this area, we want water to come right up close into this viewing area. So water is literally gonna come right up against this spot. We're gonna end up facing this with some cedar inside the actual water. So liner is gonna come up like this, come over, and then we have a basically just a big top cap that'll go in here and kind of hide that liner. And the back side you can see this laser that we set up now setting up the water level is so important on our skimmer box we always want that water level right around here just above this third screw hole so one two three in here so we set up this laser and we can tell where our water level is going to be all the way through here so now we start setting up these aqua blocks and the main reason we're setting up the aqua blocks is to displace the weight of the water remember we're on top of a crawl space here so we've really got to kind of spread the weight all the way across if we were to come in here and just put our liner right up against the wall wall here right up against the wall over here there's gonna be way too much weight and even though they've reinforced this floor from underneath it's just too risky so we're setting these aqua blocks kind of figuring out where we want pond and where we want stream and this will displace a lot of that weight so when we get this all figured out we'll put down some thick fabric and then our liner will come up and over all this stuff so right now it's just kind of an organic process no different than really digging the only restriction is we have to use these things rather than soil so we're just gonna kind of piece this together once we get this all situated, then we'll come in here and get our fabric and liner in, and then I think it'll start making sense to a lot more people, including myself. <laughs> <laughs> so something really important, especially in a closed in space like this with drywall and then the ceiling coming down so low, our voice even kind of carries through here. And when we're building a waterfall, you really, really want to be mindful of the sound that that waterfall is going to make. If our water level's here and I were to do a drop and it come down and just crash into this water, it's going to be deafening inside this place. So when we build this waterfall, more likely than not, the way we'll probably do this is water will roll out of this and then just kind of create more of a stream look as it enters the pond way out over here instead of one big crashing fall because it'll just be too loud so we're looking for deeper more babbly brook type sound inside of here Day one progress, Eddie? Real good progress right now, absolutely. Yeah, we got all the structural stuff. We got the wall in place, aqua blocks. We got that sub stuff in. We got all our materials moved inside. So yeah, looking great. I 
think we made some pretty good progress. We laid the groundwork for, I think, a pretty easy day well, tomorrow. Think about it this way, like you saw a picture that yeah. had a conference hall. Right. So we really didn't know what we were getting into. Working with square or rectangle aquabots. <laughs> <laughs> like he was gonna correct me. Actually, they're rectangular, right? <laughs> <laughs> but look at it, I mean, it looks like we dug out a pond once we put the fabric over it. It's amazing, it's isn't it? I, I like the look of it. I think it's gonna look a little bit better. You know, doing the block wall would've been nice. Adds a lot of weight, but we have so much rock and stuff in here, so kind of going to wood. The wood's gonna look, I, I like the wood look a I whole lot better. Like, How about Renee having all this styrofoam? Oh, that would've been hard yeah. to deal with if yeah. we didn't have that. I have a ton of confidence in how this is gonna look yeah. because we're already generating ideas already yeah. because of the way this stuff sat. So I'm excited to actually come in here tomorrow, get the liner in here, and start building all of this. I think it's gonna be a ton of fun. And we still gotta get that camera in here. You can see all that underwater stuff, which is exactly what they need here at the Nature Center because it's gonna kinda tell that story, life underwater right here in Lake Erie. All right, I'm hungry and super, super thirsty. <laughs> So let's get out of here. I know what that, I know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll see you tomorrow.